So in the next few minutes, I'm going to uh, cover the uh, uh, two, as <coughs> two aspects. One is the, uh, our V-read technology. Uh, an an another one is the, our, our Vim flash controller. So uh, in, very in very memory, we spend a lot of time <coughs> Focusing and optimizing the uh, sustained IOPS. So, uh, as you probably know, uh, if you pick up any, you know, SSD, commercial SSD, consumer SSD, <coughs> uh, the flash generally gives a very good read performance, very low latency, consistent read performance. But as you start to write more and with mixed workload and the write heavy workload, uh, you start to see that we call right cliff after um, I don't know half an hour or one hour uh, consistent writing the write performance um, goes down by 5 to 10 x and the latency also goes up so in valid memory we believe the, the the key benefit of replacing the HDD with the flash is the uh, predictability of the performance so uh, that's our value. So we focus a lot on making sure that in any workload, random write, sequential write, uh, different block size, uh, the customer gets the same performance and the same experience. There are a lot of uh, things affecting the sustained performance. Um, uh, some obvious ones are write amplification. The uh, when 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 the, when the uh, uh, workload is is write heavy. Uh, eventually, Active GC kicks in, and um, actively, you know, in the background and moving blocks around, uh, that will affect the front end the uh, front end performance. Uh, so that's one factor. There's others like a read algorithm that we're using, a traditional like a software read. Uh, sometimes do a. a <coughs> A read modified write internally, and uh, that also contributes to inconsistency of performance. Mm -hmm. So, in the next two slides, I'm going to focus on two uh, key as aspects we we did to uh, to to prevent uh, GC and uh, longer latency and uh, uh, to affect our uh, performance. <coughs> the first. Uh, the first uh, thing I want to cover is uh, inside our Vim. Um, so uh, we support uh, multi -way, uh, multiple way GC. Um, as as uh, if you, if you pick up pick up any SSD, and uh, you can start with a simple approach, you know. Uh, keep track of uh, block valid count and uh, based on the valid page count moving block uh, ahead and uh, when all the data are copied to a new block erase the block uh, the problem with that is uh, as you can see uh, no matter how what your workload is eventually the data because your background GC mixed with the front-end user traffic the data is uh, uniformly distributed. Um, so sometimes that causes a problem when uh, you know, your GC only have 15% uh, of over space over provisioning, for example. Uh, it creates the right amplification. Uh, in, in, in our implementation, we are actively tracking two factors. One is the um, page value count. The other is the block aging factor. So we combine these two factors and uh, we come up with a formula to learn the, uh, to sort of learning, uh, learn the uh, backend workload uh, characteristics. Um, and also we support a multiple way of uh, write stream. For the, for the code data, we write to a different stream. For the hot data, we write uh, to a different stream. So. And uh, they are not uh, interleaving with the front-end traffic. So essentially, we have these three uh, streams. Code GC goes to one, hot, da hot data goes to another, and the front, front traffic goes to the third stream. Okay, so this is one technology where 
we are we are used to reduce the right amplification. And uh, you, as you can see in the uh, pictures here, uh, if the user workload is, for example, only 15% of hard data, effectively the work site with the work set and 15% uh, of uh, 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 spare space uh, over provisioning, uh, the effective uh, uh, sp spare space is 50%. As on the left hand side, if you, you are doing the general purpose, you know, uh, GC, uh, it's only 15% of a spare. So the re How does this interact with wear leveling? Because if I yes, buy so an array and load it up and half the data never moves again, Right. Then there's going to be a bunch of flash that gets written to once or twice. Yes. Or, so and so the, the rest data of it's going to get hammered. Right. So the data that goes to the code, the data uh, store does not mean we never touch the data. Uh, it's it's that we are using a different GC policy for that uh, uh, so code stream. So so you rotate pages. So we, yeah. From so, GC yeah. code. Okay. Yeah. So once in a while we still inspect all the uh, code data. So uh, like I said before. Uh, there are two factors. One is your aging factor. This, the second is your page value count. Okay. So the we combine what? these two factors what, to come up with. What's the second factor? Page, page write page, count. Page value count. So if, if the flash block has a you know, less valid page, then that has a priority of moving. But on the other side, we also consider how long the, you know, the block has been stayed there, nobody touched we once in a while pick up that block for GC. So, so it looks like the diagram on the right at any point in time, but, which is the f but occasionally you swap the hot and spare and cold yeah, around. Right, but most uh, active site is on that 15% uh, of uh, hot data site. On a, on a short term basis, yeah. Right, yes. Right. Okay, got yeah. it. And uh, uh, also we expand uh, that uh, multi-way GC uh, queues a little bit our data metadata management, we use uh, the lookup table, the flash lookup look table where you translate logic address to flash address. Uh, our, we manage it persistent, persistently inside flash in a journal and checkpointing. So we, once in a while we checkpoint the entire f table, but we also, you know, uh, writing the journals in between and uh, when, when you power on, we recover the entire in DRAM uh, translation table. <coughs> so for that, we actually use a fourth um, stream for dedicated stream for the metadata. Because the metadata is managed in a circular buffer, buffer uh, fashion, so we figure we, we never need to GC that, that uh, stream. So we just let it go and uh, that, that is mirrored inside the flash. So it's safe and uh, we turn off the GC for that. So as you can see, uh, so is this, is this yeah. cold data packing only intra Vim or is it inter Vim also? This is inside the Vim. Okay. Yeah. This is inside of Vim. And as you can see, ex extending that, we are also working on using other streams, uh, expanding more streams to helping the storage software to take advantage of uh, software-defined garbage collection and the flash management. <coughs> uh, for this, uh, I'm going to cover the VCM and the VRead uh, because I think we have. This will uh, pass out the uh, VRead VCM controllers. Card. Yeah. Four this is our read controller card. You can. They're all identical, but four of them in the system. And, so uh, so this, yeah, you can. And take a look. I need a screwdriver. <laughs> Can't see anything useful without a screwdriver. <laughs> yes. So. Where's my Mac? You need a 7300. <laughs> well, you have to buy one. As, oh. as Jim oh. mentioned before, uh, well, we are using VRead, so essentially what happened is uh, uh, we optimize the 4K level, uh, user block size is 4K, and uh, for each user access, write access, 4K are strapped into full 1K data chunk with the parity and the uh, uh, write to 5 VIMs in the read group. Mm. 
So it's a so one, essentially it's, it's a one K strip. Yeah, it's a one K strip to each VM. We have wow. five VMs in uh, each regroup. So it's a four plus one uh, protection. Uh, I know there's some questions coming. So uh, <coughs> well, currently our VM size is one terabyte, and the system raw capacity is uh, sixty terabyte. Um, um, so we had some questions where you know four plus one, but um, we feel that uh, one terabyte for the flash uh, is very fast. You know backend with performance, the rebuild time is is uh, is uh, is minimum. And uh, besides that, there's uh, <coughs> I want to mention that um, the. Uh, uh, scrubbing we are doing is uh, integrated with the VRAID controller. So it's not like uh, we f we find a few failed blocks, and then we discard the entire VM. We start, you know, rebuilding the entire component because that takes hours. And right? it's not 1991 <laughs> RAID. <laughs> I'll, I'll get into there, but but uh, uh, we actually actively scrubbing inside the VIM, and uh, for any. Indications of weak dice or weak blocks, or we notify the RAID controller <coughs> start to rebuild. So effectively, any page and uh, block in place failure are addressed and uh, are rebuilt within a few seconds. So that reduces the rebuild time and re increases our reliability. When we uh, looking at the further. Uh, in, uh, getting a denser uh, flash, uh, flash parts, uh, two terabyte and a four terabyte uh, VIMs. We are also looking at uh, uh, increasing the number of failure protections, like four plus two and others. So, so are, are you over provisioning in, uh, at a VIM level to account for failed blocks, or are you, uh, or failed cells, or are you doing that more at an array level? So we are. Uh, Carving out 15% uh, of the spare space at the VIM level uh, to uh, to account for G garbage collection and the bad blocks. And we manage it at a system level, so all those space are available to the VRAID to move the blocks around. Okay. So yeah, we do that. Okay. And it was uh, so very quick point. I think you picked up something very important. Yes, this is striping is at 1K level, so as opposed to such a standard SSDs would be 4K or mm. 8K optimized. And that don't give you the performance that you need for the 4K. So what we have done is yeah, so these VIMs are, they, they take in 1K optimized. So if you have a 4K user I/O coming in, even that gets parallelized over four VIMs. Yeah. So that's, that's the way you bump the performance up. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'll cover that. You'll see, you know, the, the rationale behind the way we are choosing, choosing this way. Uh, we uh, we uh, strap the 4K IOs into four 1K IOs and send to five VIMs with the parity. Um, the reason is we want, we want to remove the read modify write at uh, read controller level. Okay. And the challenge, of course, is uh, you know you, you could have um, you could have uh, you know uh, tail latency for for read any you know all four VIMs has to respond before you can finish the IO. Things like that. So, for that purpose, we build a read controller and um, a Vim data pass completely in FPGA. So we control the latency, a clockwise cycle accuracy. So uh, that guarantees first we don't have remodified write. Second is uh, the pipeline is fully filled. You know, there's no bubbles. All the bubbles are squeezed out. By using the complete hard hardware hard hardware data pass. <coughs> okay. So so on a overwrite, you just write new data and garbage collect around it instead of having to do a read modify write. Uh, for the read for the new write, uh, we just uh, directly uh, strap into 4K and uh, calculate the parity on the fly and the write to five VIMs and the G uh, right. and the inside and then the each garbage VIM. collection picks up the exactly. old version. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that way you right. never need you never need to yes. recalculate the parity because you're just writing fresh data. Yes, and yeah. because it's so small, you you don't have to. You got it. it. That, that's got it. that's correct. So you're supposed to you know 32k aligned, then you have yeah, to. Yeah, so you're trading the additional metadata of keeping track of more stripes. 
and for yeah. not having to do the rewrite. That's and that's where designing our own VIM okay. sort of helps. Make, Actually, I'll pass it around just to you. Make, so make sense yeah. in this use case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the other Would be really start. crazy with disk drives. Yeah. What will happen that's with true. the introduction of TLC or 3D NAND in the, in the game? Yeah, so we are currently at the 19 nanometer MLC, and uh, we're working with the, our flash partners uh, to introducing new uh, new uh, flash types. So TLC and uh, and the 3D and the flash are all in the pipeline. Yeah, and the slide is coming up. You know, we since we have the title lessons with Toshiba, the moment they are ready, you know, we get it. Now these you want to take yeah. home. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that, so that that opens up a couple of questions. How many unique FPGAs are there in the system? So we have uh, the Vim has uh, one FPGA. Right. Uh, the the VCM has another FPGA. So there's two. There are two FPGAs. Yeah. But then they are distributed. I mean, it's yeah, a component no, right, no, it's how, perfect. It was how many. I'm thinking, how many chips do you have to spin every time you do a generation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have any ASICs besides uh, FPGAs? We're FPGA only. Oh, FPGA only, and Litho change only requires that the VIM FPGA change, not the VCM, because there is the right. protocol already established. So right, you can you can change the two of them asynchronously. Asynchronously. So what's right. the page size on the uh, the the uh, VIMs? The NAND yes, page size? Yeah, it's a uh, 16K. 16K, so... That's the raw flash uh, a part, uh, page size. Yeah, 16K. yeah. So when you write, uh, so somebody writes a 4K, you split it out into 1K plus parity, and then you're going you're gonna to accumulate 16 of those before you actually write into a page and in, in name. Yeah, I'm going to cover that. Yes. So, okay. so, so we're actually using so dual, dual page write internally, so we are writing two pages at the same time. We accumulate 32K. So 32. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we send down flash command asking them to program two page. Uh, so it's a lot of uh, 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 bandwidth we can get from doing that. So okay, and does does the the Vim FPGA do LDPC? Uh, we're currently using BCH. Uh, we are at uh, 19 nanometer, and uh, based on our vendor's recommendation, <laughs> we're using 40 bit BCH. And with the f you know future. Uh, flash uh, chips and the technologies will be crappier and you'll need to go to LDPC. We, then we'll have to go. <laughs> We're getting yeah, modules. Course, yeah. yeah, and right. <laughs> the entire system is a modulized design so we can remove part, replace with a newer. So I don't, I don't see any super caps on these. How do you keep the RAM up? The RAM's on this, right? There's ADR. Yeah, it's so on the system. I'm sorry? ADR. Awareness. Super cap is yeah. in the power supply system. Oh, okay. The Vim it does not have super account. I got you. Yeah. Right. So it comes to the next uh, uh, topic is uh, by doing the V-read, uh, there's a, another uh, benefit. F for an, at any time, <coughs> we can schedule that so that only one Vim is at the erasing, page erasing or page uh, programming mode. As you probably know, page programming and erasing takes much longer time than page read. They are like a 1.5 millisecond. Page erasing is some like 5 millisecond. Well, page read is only 50, 40, 50 microsecond. Uh, so, one problem that comes with SSD or uh, with the flash is uh, when the flash die is busy at the erasing and the programming, uh, the read operation is blocked behind. By using our V-Read technology, we schedule the right window so that at any time, only one piece of Vim is at the programming mode. So for the incoming uh, data, they are landed in the DRAM, uh, right buffer, and we acknowledge right, right away. And uh, when the right erase window and the programming window comes in, we start GC and we, we start a write, <coughs> and, uh, uh, so, s other four VIMs are available for read. So, for any read, we read from four VIMs that are not in the window and uh, reassemble the data. So, this, this guarantees that uh, the entire array, all the data set, is always available for read. Read is uh, completely unblocked. <coughs> On the right-hand side, as you can see, if, if we are using the uh, standard SSD, we don't have that level of control when to ask the flash chip to do the page programming and erasing. 
So the latency is harder to, to manage. So, so when you write the data, do you apply a checksum to each of the 1K blocks before you write into the VIM or? Right, so the checksum is, a, checksum is a computed, it's a 64-bit six, CRC. It's computed at the, v, uh, at the VRead, at the VCM before sending down to each VIM. And uh, the 64-bit 64 CR, 64 CRC are splitted. They are also read it and write down to in each individual VIM. When they read back, CRC is first uh, reassembled. Then original data is all reassembled. And then CRC is the check against the uh, original data. This is actually a very strong data integrity check. Yeah. Guarantees no, there's good. no you know, uh, silent data crash corruption. <coughs> Just give you a, a idea on you know, how uh, the array performance looks like. Uh, if if uh, the the workload is read heavy, uh, from the science side you can see it's one million apps. It's a, more, a little more than one million apps. Sustained apps even at 100 percent write. Uh, is still 400k at less than one millisecond. You can even push this number higher, but latency may you know fluctuate a bit. So basically, this shows that uh, you know we can guarantee at a low at this you know predictable latency with um, with a sustained write. Can the write to the array can be for days, weeks. Do you, do you have similar numbers for larger I/O sizes? So you know, if somebody's yeah. going to pump a SQL database on here, that's going to throw much bigger blocks at it, isn't it? Yeah, we have it, and it's all published. Uh, we'd be happy to, you know, send, send the thing. Here, that. given the business of the slide, we just picked the 4K, but yeah, we have. So you will see the same thing. The peak to in order of to sustain, this is the level of decline that we see. That's it. Mm -hmm. okay, so it's always so we always ask our customer to provision their workload based on the sustained IOPS and sustained latency number. So mm -hmm. we, we accompany this one. In fact, we have, you know, we are starting to not publish on the peak. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't help the customer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so as we go into the next section, I think is the next section is transferring. I just wanted to do a quick check. Uh, we have only 25 minutes left or 30 minutes left, and we have software and all those things to cover. <coughs> so we are in the VIM, we are going to sort of accelerate. But is there any particular topic that you want to, because we have software heavy duty coming up, Tim is you know, restless over there because he's running out of time. Uh, <laughs> anything in the hardware that you want to pick up, otherwise the VIM section we are going to just accelerate because we have talk, talked about it you know, quite a bit already. Anything in the hardware that uh, Chris can accelerate, uh, uh, highlight? So maybe the VIM, you can just accelerate. Yeah, so I'll go really quick. So as you can see, we design our customized VIM in-house. Uh, sometimes we got questions, you know, uh, why are you using VIMs, not standard SSD? I just want to stress the point here. It's an integrated part of our VRAID technology. The things like a 1K, uh, 1K optimized blocks, uh, block size and uh, distributed CRC, those things you, you don't get from standard SSD because they are general purpose. And we build our system for our VRAID architecture in that uh, purpose. Uh, and this is the summarize uh, of why we're choosing to use our you know, in-house build VIM versus a standard SSC. As you can see, I won't go into details, but uh, for example, the translation table is one-to-one -one direct mapping. Uh, program erasing scheduling is supporting the right window, that, like I said before. Uh, we also have code and hot data separation that's also covered in previous slides. And uh, besides that, you know, strong, uh, strong CRC checkings, and uh, 1K optimized the block size, and uh, and so on. Three three channel uh, uh, three channel interface, and uh, power failure protection from the from the system level. So again, the goal of this slide is to say we are not saying that commodity SSD is not good. You know, for other vendors, you know, who find it appropriate, it is good enough. But for the kind of system we have put together, some of part matters. Vim is just one part. VCM is one part. This int the entire system architecture matters for us. So when the ecosystem picks up and provides us, you know, this kind of you know features, that triple porting and all those things, we're matching the cost. We'd be happy to go in over there. But right now, they are not there yet.